Hello, welcome. Today I'm back with a longer term review of the Light Lens Lab Speed Pancro 2. Hi, Matt here from MrLocker.com. After owning this lens now for nearly three months, I'll share lots of sample photos with my Leica M240, my Leica SL mirrorless camera, and film sample photos shot with my Leica M3. Here you can see the size of the lens with the hood attached. It's a reed style screw in hood, a vented hood but it does add quite a lot of size to the, the lens itself, so where possible I use it without a hood. I have the silver chrome version which looks amazing on both my M3 and my M240. It's one of three light lens lab lenses that I bought and I will do full videos for all of them. If you are a lens fan, definitely look at subscribing if you've not yet subscribed because I've done about 350 videos so far. Here you can see the silver finish of the chrome pancro on the left and the Elcan on the right with my M3 and M240 and they match really nicely. This is actually my second video on this lens. I'll link the first video below. Okay, first impressions of the Speed Pancro. I've been using this lens at every opportunity in all sorts of cir circumstances and lighting situations. Uh, you'll see lots of example photos and some video clips coming up. Uh, normally I use it on the SL, but I have used it a few times on the M just to see how it feels using it on a, a rangefinder M camera. For me I prefer smaller lenses on an M camera such as the Elcan as you can see on the left. The SP2 has got a very Leica like aperture scale, uh, very smooth with half stop aperture clicks. It's got a built in UV filter but you can remove it and I have done a full blog post on this which I can link below if you want to see any of the photos in full res. Other things to note, close focus distance of 0.7 meters and a 43 mm filter size. What about the origin of this lens? Rather than try to replicate what other people have already said, I highly recommend you checking out Ted Forbes' video. I can link that below also. Amazing video and he can say it far better than I can. <laughs> okay, we're at the colors of the SP2. Again, I've shot it in many different situations to try to give you as many different examples as possible. I've had the lens with me at several of my workshops, so that's always a good opportunity to do some photos in London, often we're in the, the city centre. Uh, as you can see, the colours are, I would say, vibrant, but they're not overly saturated. And I would say they're, yeah, they're natural colours uh, in higher contrast lighting situations. And you'll see why I say that in a minute. So normally I prefer to shoot with higher contrast lighting, but what about if the lighting is more muted? When I was shooting in Italy earlier this year, we had very muted light, as you can see here, very diffuse light. And this light then really gives real pastel looking photos and colors. And the lens shot in this light gives real pastel, beautiful, soft colors and very cinematic looking pictures. And I really liked it. So very good if you want a more cinematic look to your digital sensor. What about lens flare? I did try to use a lens in all situations with and without hoods and that's probably my favorite lens a flare pattern but this is me using it not trying to flare the lens but still seeing flare uh, as you can see it's normally a blue flare but if you get the photo wrong if you want to call it like that you do get like a whiting out of the entire photo so it can be problematic in real term uh, use so that's flare on the lens or without the hood and then you can see my hand blocking the sun there and you see the contrast increases and then I'll move my hand away and you see the contrast goes again. Next, bokeh. Um, as you know I'm a bit of a bokeh fan with being a portrait and model photographer so I always try to shoot at the sun for a bit of bokeh in my backgrounds. As you can see in the background of these photos you can see the style of the bokeh. It's a bit like a, some call it onion ring bokeh or soap bubble bokeh with a more defined edge to the bokeh balls. Uh, this is shot at minimum focus distance and just looking for situations to get more bokeh. And here's a little video clip again just to show what the bokeh looks like. As you can see from this clip, it's not a swirly lens. You do have slight cat eyes towards the edges and more circular in the center. Lens sharpness. Here's a sharpness test at minimum focus distance, f2, f2.8 and then at f4. And it really cleans up by f4. I think f4 is the sweet, pot, sweet spot. Here again, shot at f2. And then watch how it cleans up when you shoot at f4. These photos are shot at either f5.6 or f8. And the sharpness improves even more as I was using off-camera strobes. 
If you want to see how the sharpness compares to other popular lenses, watch the part one video, I'll link it below. Okay, next, black and white photography. As you know, I love my black and white and most of what I post and use for my personal use is black and white. So all these photos are shot in RAW with the Cook Speed Pancro 2 or the Light Lens Lab Speed Pancro 2. And then I just applied my Mr. Leica black and white presets. As with the color photography, if you shoot in high contrast lighting, as I tend to do, you will get good contrast in your images. Most of these photos are shot with a strong directional light, which is my preference, whether I make it myself with LED light panels or use the sun itself. Many of these photos will be shot f2, maybe f2.8, and this photo is shot with the Leica M11. Again, this was shot during another workshop. Um, I've been using it pretty much non-stop during the nearly three months that I've had this lens. Here was me testing the lens this week and I came across a model shoot in action. So I asked if I could take a few action photos. So that's what they are. And if you want a more soft, painterly, grey tone look, to shoot this lens in diffuser light. Here are more photos from Italy shot in that diffuser light I shared earlier and it gives a real vintage vibe to your photos because of the lower contrast and less black blacks. That said, if you love your Hollywood glamour, again the glow from this lens will give you a more of a vintage Hollywood glamour look that suits this style of pictures. Okay, for you film shooters, what about on film? If you saw my recent chimping video, I was in London shooting with the awesome Sonia and as well as using my M240, I was using the Cook lens on my Leica M3. So this is the first time I'd shot film with this lens because ideally I'd plan to use it for digital because it's a bit too soft for film. I knew it was soft, so all the photos you're about to see or are seeing are shot at f4. I didn't go beyond f4 and I think f4 is pretty much a sweet spot as I say for film or for any amount of sharpness. Um, I wouldn't consider shooting this lens at f2 on film, it would just be too soft and mushy. The photos are shot with Fuji Acros 100 and they're all shot on, as I say, the Leica M3 single stroke. It was high contrast lighting and then I do tend to add an extra bit of contrast when I scan the images with my Epson V800 and they're developed in 1 to 4 XDOL. Follow the blog if you want more info on my developing. How much does this lens cost? It depends on where you live. If you're in the UK, £716 from the official website or $900. If you follow the MrDarker.com blog, link below, go to the kit list tab and you can save 5% off all light lens lab lenses. Here are some more sample photos from my trip to Italy earlier this year when I took the light lens lab at Speed Pancro 2 to a body painting festival at the Villa Laura, uh, close to Fermo in Italy. Um, didn't really know what to expect, so I took the lens hoping it will give a more painterly look for the models. I think most photos will be shot at f2, but the high contrast off-camera flash lighting that I was using gives a lot more apparent sharpness to the photos. Can you tell which is a model and which is a statue? <laughs> we had some very talented makeup artists with us, and so the the they painted up two models to look like statues. <laughs> they can see the statues uh, after the fact. And this is reality for the poor models trying to get all the stuff off their faces after the, the pictures. I was using other lenses in Italy, so look out for my 75mm Ultron videos. And also I still need to make the video for the Zeiss Bygone 75 1.5. So I keep meaning to do that one soon, very soon. <laughs> I just want to stop the video to say a quick thanks to my awesome patrons. We will be doing a Patreon meetup in Italy in August. So if you're interested, make sure you're signed up. This photo is shot in available light in the late sunshine and this one also with a preset applied. We then also had a model who was a performing artist and like one of these fire dancery people. And so she was doing this for us. So I wanted to see how the cook lens would work with the flames in the photos. As you can see, it works really, really well for this type of lighting. And you can see why cinema photographers would have used the original lens. This brings me nicely onto video. I will be making a follow-up video talking about this lens compared to an alternative Leica lens, especially for video, but also for photos. So that's come. Feel free to subscribe so not to miss it. So what is the verdict? 
This lens is very nicely made and I would say feels very similar to a Leica lens. It will definitely give you a less digital look than a modern lens. But what about the cons? This is a big lens. It is a soft lens, so you pretty much need to shoot it at f4 for any kind of decent sharpness, especially on film. If you're just trying to find a lens that will give you a more vintage look, you can buy original vintage lenses for a lot less money. And I think the biggest selling point of this lens is actually the story. If I think about it enough, I think the reason I bought this lens was the fact that it was a 1940s cine lens that you can't buy anymore. That's my verdict. What do you guys think? I know quite a few of my patrons have also bought this lens and some of them really love it. Comment below. Thanks for watching and consider subscribing if you want to see part two where I will share an alternative to this lens for the look that I'm going for.